Hey everybody, it's Brad from Ellicott City Sovac. Uh, I'm here at Babylock Tech. Uh, we're having a great time learning all about the new Solaris uh, and all the new great products that are uh, coming out this, this fall season. Um, and I'm here with Carla Reale. Uh, she is going to be teaching me some of the new features of Palette 11 so that I can come, help, come home and teach you guys. Um, and uh, so that I hear there's some really exciting new things that we can do with the Palette 11 software that we were never able to do before. Oh yeah, it's amazing, Brad. You ready to be dazzled? Yeah, I'm ready. Show me what you got. All right. We have a new feature with the background fills. Go background ahead. fills. Yes. So like, it has uh, all of the background. Like on, a, like on the IQ Designer? Yes, yeah, so it has all the background fills of the Solaris and we have more. We have more back, so we have a total of 54 background fills built into palette. However, you can now also make your own background fills, and okay. they go up to 100 millimeters. You can make your own background fills? Yes, you can. Well, show me. All right. So we have the echo fill. This is uh, this is how it does the echo fill. Yeah, okay. So that's like what you can do on the uh, on the new Solaris machine. They have a they have a button for that. Well, but this th looks different. This is different. This is um, we have you have both options. You have the one from the Solaris, and I'll go to that. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And then you also have the one in palette only that. Well, it also, so it echoes from the outside in and from the inside out. So it gives you another really nice option for your echo quilting. And so, not only, go ahead, I'm sorry. So this is this is basing these inside shapes off of the embroidery design on the inside. So if I had a design that wasn't like a round kind of shape, I'd have a different shape on the inside. Exactly, of the, the exactly. It will echo whatever that shape is. Will it echo off of a true type font? Uh, yes, it will. Anything that's on the page, it'll catch it. Really? It'll catch the edge, yes. And you can adjust how far it is from the edge. But another thing that we have with our echo, um, with our echoes is uh, we have the triple stitch, but you also have an option of a chain stitch. And if you do a chain stitch, you don't just, you can do a diamond chain stitch or a triangle chain stitch. Really can't tell in the preview here, but it's beautiful. So you have both options and you can adjust the size of that stitch as well. So you have so much more control in the software. It's really, really cool. nice. Yeah. So let's go back to, so you have the same stippling that you do in the Solaris, which is really sweet. Yeah. Um, there's nothing different about that. So I'll go on to the crosshatch and stripe fill. So with this, you can do uh, vertical stripes. And I guess um, some of the ladies have been telling me that they're going to use this to do chenille in one easy step. Okay, yeah, All right. Um, you can adjust how far that is away from a design in the center. You don't have to have a design on here, yeah. so which is nice. Um, and you can adjust the size of the striping and your offset spacing as well. So, And you can even adjust the angle. Oh, that's neat. So yeah. what So what if you do the cross hatch, it puts, in, it puts X's in? Yes. And see that. Yeah, so um, I think it looks to me like you'd be able to use this to make uh, towel embossing designs. Yes, you can. You can do some really like tight knitting. Like if we put if we put uh, like a true type font in there and didn't put any stitches on the inside of it, just left them as a whole, would it fill around the outside and leave the inside yes. of? Oh, okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Because yep. yeah, that that's a that's a really good project. It really makes a really good gift. I, I do that all the time actually and really we just have to set the size lower right exactly and you can adjust the size and if you don't like it the way it is when you set it on the page you can still change it afterwards it's not so you it's, it's all completely editable it's just okay. really nice so it's not like you know we we apply it it's not done we can always go back and, and edit the, it, the existing exactly design that we have everything okay. about it which is sweet all you right don't have to hit undo no <laughs> <laughs> but you can right. <laughs> I hit that a lot so and this is all in one section of the software, the background fill wizard. That's like an entire yeah, so it's, it's a Yeah, it's a brand new thing, and it's really sweet because, and, you know, we'll be able to add patterns in here, too, like I was saying. Let's go next, and let's look at these oh, background yeah. fills. So this is the default, and I think this one's in the Solaris. I mean, yeah, I know this one's I in the Solaris, that, yeah. yeah. And, um, and now, that's some from the Destiny, too. I guess they're in the Solaris also. Yes, yeah. But if you're used to having a, um, the fills in the Destiny... Well, and I want to show you something that I discovered just from uh, goofing around with the program uh -huh. um, that I have never seen before in a, in a software program. So we're going to go here. I'm going to change it to this. We're going to go up to uh, about 130 millimeters for the size. Okay. And five inches. Let's see if that's what we want. Yep. 
OK. And I'm going to delete our little sunflower. Yes, delete that real quick. OK. So right. this should be acting as a fill stitch because that's what it is. It's a background fill, right? Well, we can go back into the wizard and we can. So I didn't even, you didn't even have to select anything no. before you did that. And I can select in the wizard which, which diamonds I want to fill. And I can put a separate fill in that fill and control it separately as well. Wow. So we can come down here and. That actually looked cool the way it was. What, well, but go ahead. Oh, look at that. Yeah, isn't that pretty? And so again, you can adjust the offset spacing and everything about that. And now watch this. I'm going to take that off. Click OK. Now that's really pretty. Yeah. But what if you want to use something like this for maybe some kind of a quilted, quilt border and you don't want everything around it? Right. You can now delete the background. <laughs> that is really awesome. Yes, and it, these are acting as a fill as well. So you can separate these two. Okay. So it still would be in the diamond shape. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's sweet. Want to see one other fun one that I did? I do. Okay. Like I said, completely found this out by accident. So I'm thinking, well, what if um, what if my customers got a hold of this and uh, they're so much more creative than I could ever be? I'm going oh, to. so this background fill works off of a shape. Yes. I you missed need, that. I missed yeah, that. Yeah, you need some kind of an edge. Okay. And so we have the design in there at first. Right. So I am going to um, delete that and just get a container for it. You yeah. can do it. It can be an edge. It just needs to be an edge. Right. It, it just needs to be a shape, right. it, 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 but it doesn't have to have a stitch. So right now right. we've got a zigzag for our, for our line fill. Right. Um, and that's kind of just like the way that it works in the IQ Designer. When, uh, when you bring in a shape by default, it has a satin outline. Yes, right. exactly. So it needs it needs something to work off of. Yeah, right. All right. Like so a, like a container. Right. And there's different things that you can do, and you can then uh, delete the container after mm -hmm. you get it on there. So it's not like you have right. to have it as part of the design. You can just use it as an edge. So I did this one. I'm gonna click OK. And let's go up to. Go. Cool. Okay. That looks nice. That is, but I want to turn that sideways, so I'm going to go to my sewing attributes and just do a quick 90 degree. So you've got like a full properties menu for these background fills, yeah, so basically? Yeah, right, so like the, um, and you can adjust the size here, and you can even adjust it um, with, you can adjust it and maintain the height to width or aspect ratio. So I could distort it. Right, or you could, oh, and I'll show you that in a second. So. Yeah, okay. I know. <laughs> it's it was I was having way too much fun with this. Okay, so we have our fill, and you can come in here and let's do two of those. Okay, and we're gonna go back into our background fills. Grab the circles. Okay. Oh, look at that! It's just like the circles fill on the. It's just the icon looks different. Exact. Yeah, I know some of these I had to because of, because it's a little bit bigger on in the software. I had to go. Yeah. Oh, okay, wait a minute. That's that one. Right. Right. And um, so let's make that. Make sure that changed. Okay. All right. So those are fun, but watch what happens when we select these. And go into those sewing attributes. Okay. And we're going to do a random shift. Oh, now, yeah, in, okay. In the Solaris, you have uh, three, one, two, or three mm -hmm. that you can do with this. Well, in the program, in Palette, it'll let you do 100%, and you can see it changing down there. Yeah. In the oh, I see it down, down in the. And we the have preview. random pebbles. Huh. <laughs> Isn't is that it, fun? Is it truly randomized? Yes. Wow. Well, it's, yeah, yeah, it's all skewed, and isn't that sweet? That is. That is really awesome. And so you can do that with any of the patterns. So really, between this and the fact that you can create your own patterns, you can edit existing patterns to and, and create new ones from that. And so no matter what you want to do, you can do it. And it, the sky's the limit. You so have, how do you make how do you make your own? Uh, okay, um, you would have to go to option and go into programmable stitch creator. 
And until now, we've been able to make motifs or stamp patterns, oh, pattern fills or stamp patterns. I do a class on making a rope stitch in, not in this particular program, because I uh, haven't been really used it that much, but uh, I see what I see how this is going to work. So basically, mm -hmm. you make a decorative stitch, essentially, and that's what gets turned into the pattern? Well, kind of. Um, in the in the previous versions, we've been able to do a stamp pattern or motif, right? Uh -huh. Well, now you click on this button, and it'll tell you, it'll ask you what you want to do. Right. Because if you choose new decorative fill pattern, look, we got a different grid. Right. Because okay. this is going to be 100 millimeters. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that would be like a, what you would think of as a traditional fill stitch with like a. Well, that's a four by it. four. No, that's like those are like the background fills. Oh, this is the background fill. Yeah. So okay. that's the. Okay. The, All right. Yeah. Cool. So. Um, and I really don't want to embarrass myself, my, my inability to draw, but you can do all kinds of things here. You can set different patterns, and then when you save them, it'll save it in the correct folder, so the program will grab it. I like that it gives you this preview of what uh, what the thing you've done is going to look like. Yes, I definitely need that, because there are times and what's in my head is completely different from what's showing well, sure, up in there. Well, <laughs> sure, because it's repeating. It's hard to visualize. Right, but it does help a lot, because then I can go, oh, okay, and then it helps me figure out you know, how everything's going to look, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that's how really about neat. That? Yeah, yeah, that looks cool. You're just saying that because I'm sitting here, right? Well, no. I'm teasing. <laughs> and so... Oops. Look at it. It makes little M's. Oh, it does. <laughs> okay, so if I didn't get something right, you can adjust the points sure. like that. Yeah. And so when you go to um, do that... I would try to make an awesome skull. That's what I usually do. Well, this is as good as it gets with me. So <laughs> if you make that skull, I want to see it. So, <laughs> And so we'll name this uh, after me. In your computer, don't worry, you can delete it. I'll Carlos. Keep it, I'll keep it forever. <laughs> and so now, when we go to, let's close out of here, all right? And so now, if we were going to uh, go back to our background fills, yeah, we can fill that middle one with it. Yep. We don't have to close the program or anything like that. We can find it, and it will be it's in right here. right there at the beginning. Yeah, well, because alphabetical uh -huh, order. Sure. So that's a happy accent so we can adjust the size uh -huh. so if we want that to be maybe a 25 instead of a hundred millimeter yeah 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 neat Let's see what we get so that's a totally brand so basically it's not 50 whatever patterns it's like an infinite number of different exactly patterns because you can make anything you want exactly that is really really cool yeah um, there you know can you do a similar thing with the lines like like how in the Solaris you can um, apply some of the decorative fills to the lines, not not decorative um, the, fills, the, the decorative fills, the stitches. stitches. Yes, you can turn this. You can turn the. You have to change it to stitches in the program. So you have to convert to stitches. Okay, and then so it'll it can't be like, it can't be considering it a decorative fill. But what right. if you just draw a line with like a drawing oh, yeah. tool? You could just go ahead and use. Oh yeah, you can use anything. Different. Actually, we have. I guess have, that's just um, motif stitches, right? I mean, I guess yes. we've had that for a while. Right. But but you but you but, could combine these with it by converting these to not be decorative fill designs right i could go in and convert my lines here to be a chain stitch or whatever. right exactly cool. and we do have we do have a new uh, flexible spiral fill which is kind of fun you want me to show you that real quick yes okay um let's go to just going to create a shape here be real creative and use a circle uh -huh. there we go and That's my go-to shape <laughs> I know it's so easy to make one, right? So, uh, especially for, but this flexible spiral stitch works for any fill, which is very cool. So, um, what do you mean it works for any fill? So you could, or any shape, I should say. Okay. So, so it'll conform itself to like a star, right? Or well, let's like grab that. a star too. Yeah, just, let's see. Just for fun here, and I'll show you the differences here. So. Oh no way! Yeah, isn't that beautiful? So you can adjust the start point. So you can start from the inside and go out. You can adjust the spacing. So if I want to change that to maybe I don't know five millimeters. That's Oops, fifty. Fifty. <laughs> 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 Only had one cup of coffee. Oops, sorry. There we go. I'll use the arrows. <laughs> okay. Let's go down to five. Close enough. All right. And then you can get a completely different look. You know, one thing that I noticed about this um, is that you're not hitting an apply button. Mm -hmm. Like the changes are happening right away. Yes, that instantly. Is, that is one thing that annoys me about a lot of the programs that I use is having to hit the apply button on the properties menu. Um, I know. 
it and doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you have to it, do it, it so many when times have, when you're working. Well, when you have people that have a monitor that doesn't have a high enough resolution to display everything on the screen, and then the apply button is hidden. Those of you who this happens to, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, where you can't see your apply button. You gotta you gotta move the sequence view or you know whatever program you're using. You gotta move something out of the way to be able to hit your apply button. That happens in my classes all of the time. So that's really cool that it just automatically engages your your properties that you're changing oh it's wonderful and it'll they'll change too so it'll keep the same spacing as your size so yeah. notice when i got a, when it got a little bigger that we have um it, it'll fill in the line yeah. so this this setting will change and you can tell it to go clockwise or counterclockwise as well uh -huh. so but oh, there's so also you can pick your start and stop point just by hitting both. that both no you have a start point so you can tell it the what direction you want it to sew do yeah. i want it to sew from the inside right. out or from the outside in but instead of dragging up instead of dragging a little green dot somewhere or the other you're just hitting a button right but then there's also a direction so you can so you have two separate so the start point is a separate uh, setting from okay. your direction so you can so you can completely control how this sews is what can maybe port huh. important if you're pathing something or you don't yeah. know long jump stitch sure. or whatever um, so that's kind of cool. digitizing for a hat something like that right now watch this so you can also control, this is what makes this different from the other fill stitch, is that you, you can control use... control the, the focus of it? Yes. Yeah, nice. Ooh, that's kind of funky. It is, like it is that. interesting. It kind of like flattens the lines out. Yep, you can, whatever. And Oh, that's almost 3D. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I dragged it out. I've never yeah, done that before. You broke it I just, now. I just dragged it right out. That's <laughs> good. That's cool. Infinite stars. Yeah, oh my gosh. It does, it's like, it's like you put two mirrors... I hit this, so I'm just seeing this for the first time. I didn't that. even think, okay, what happens if you pull it outside of that? Well, it pulls it inside out. That's cool. It is pretty cool. I love that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I know. It's like, <laughs> I mean, I find, it's so funny. I'm so obnoxious to sit by at work, I know, because I've been finding these things, and I'm sharing them with all, you know, my team members and uh -huh. everything, and I'm like, Debbie, come here. you got to see this. Or Diane, come on over. And they're like, what is she talking about now? But then they're like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun um, just getting to know the program, and so it, it's it's really fun. I yeah, well, you know, I I think that there's some really awesome stuff in here. <laughs> um, the I, I like the way that it kind of works as in some ways like an extension of the IQ designer uh, because yes. with these decorative fills, um, we've got the things that we can do on the machine, and we can do them at home or maybe at work. We take our dongle with us, you know, to work and. Maybe we all do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Don't we yeah, all? Yeah. On it. You can do your IQ designer <laughs> stuff right on there, and then uh, you know you can just export the the designs. I also like that you'll be able to open the PHX designs in this. Um, yes, and you can send it to your Solaris and back from the Solaris oh, yeah, wirelessly. Oh wirelessly. I didn't mm -hmm. even talk about that. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on setting that up, uh, but it is really cool the way that works. So you can send your designs to it. Um, those of you who um, have maybe tried other wireless solutions in the past, it is easier. Uh, than that so we are uh, like I said I'm gonna have my own separate video on that when I get back to the store no. but that's really exciting oh I'm sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you so this is the only program that can read PHX right uh, okay yep which that, is the PHX format. is the the format that the machine uses um, you uh, you still use PES designs you don't have to go and look for a design pack with PHX designs it's PES but uh, this software is able to read designs that you pull off of your machine does that include things that you make in the um, IQ Designer? Yes. Um, with those, though, you, what you need to do is because they're not really a stitch file until you save them sure. into the embroidery side. Yeah. So a lot of times people are saving or just the, stopping. The work and, in the IQ right. before it digitizes. Right. right. So yeah, it won't well, that read that work. Work fi working file, but they Although have to take it Although it would be cool if it would pull the, the objects out, maybe in an update. Maybe there'll be an update where you can actually write that pull down. the objects we'll out <laughs> that, that you create and, and import them back in. Uh, that would be fun. That would be fun. But this also gives you an advantage, Brad, because if your if your machine is busy stitching out one of your creations, yeah. you can be working on That's a second true. one you on you your software. You can't use the IQ designer while the machine is sewing. Exactly. Uh, so you we love to multitask. Right. Totally. Well, this is pretty awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Carla, for for sitting with me and showing me all this new stuff. Um, thank you. It's been fun. And. Uh, Guys, I'll see you when I get back to Maryland, uh, and we'll we'll be having all kinds of fun parties and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna try and make at least one more video while I'm out here. Uh, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.